Hello everybody, this is September and I'm checking in from the Hanor server today. This video is going to be about a recent tool that I have created for everybody in the community. Uh, I'm going to show you how to use the tool and some neat things that you can do with it. In the end, I hope this tool saves you both time and gold. Okay, so what this tool does is it calculates the silver to labor ratio for using seed beds. Additionally, it will calculate the processing of raw materials into their final products. Uh, for example, rice into ground grain or azalea into dried flowers. Now, before you say, ah, screw this video, I don't have any seed beds. Actually, this tool is more than just that. So stick with me, especially if you use cross region alts to pay for your patron. All right, so real quick on how, how this tool was actually developed and the reason it came about is I had been recording my personal data because I've been doing off-the-cuff calculations when I was planting my own uh, seed beds. And I actually recently on Twitch, I had been saying in my streams that seed beds were a pretty decent way to make gold. Though at the time, uh, when I was saying it, I really only had mental calculations to go by, and I wanted some hard numbers. All right, so the first iteration of this tool was simply, as I said before, me recording uh, the various things that I had planted in my seed beds. I currently own five upgraded houses on hand or that's across three accounts. One of them is in upgraded thatch. The other are the upgraded 16 by 16 cottages. Um, that gives me a total of 10 seed beds, two per house. So after a few days of uh, just recording this data, I actually realized it would be more beneficial to know before I plan something what potentially I could be making. And really, the market is so dynamic. I mean, prices change from hour to hour, let alone from day to day or update to update. Simply having the historical data wasn't really telling me everything I wanted to know before I planted something. So with that in mind, I got to work on this tool. And what I ended up with was something that I could use before planting. That way it allowed me to pick the crop or the seed that was gonna give me the best return for both my time or labor. All right, this tool does include my personal data and that data actually still does serve two purposes. The first is the data shows how long it will take to grow something for everything that I've already grown. The stuff is all over the place. Stuff will grow in those seed beds anywhere from 20 minutes to 24 hours. So you can see that data here in column E, which is at this point I should point out that seed beds are climate independent, meaning that no matter where your house is located and what you plant, the timer on that seedbed is always going to be the same. Uh, this information is actually useful, especially if you're going to be online for a while. Uh, you'll want to plant something that is faster growing. You know, you could get two rotations out of your seed beds instead of one if you do a longer crop. And so that way at night, before you go to bed, you can like plant something that uh, takes longer to grow and maybe more profitable, something like peanuts, which is an eight hour grow time. All right, so the second thing this historical data told me was the average yield I was getting per seed bed. Now, so you know, um, I have been harvesting on a character that had 90,000 proficiency and one that had less than 10,000. Here, regardless of what character did the harvesting, the yields were pretty consistent. Lows in the 1300s, highs in the mid 1400s, and that is for 10 seed beds. Also, there was some data on cotton, and I just threw that out of the average because cotton is one of those uh, plants that kind of just does its own thing. So I, I ignored that data when I found the average. So in the end, what I, what I have found is an average yield per seed bed is about 139. Now, we can use that information as a baseline 
uh, before you plan something to see what kind of silver to labor ratio you can expect. And again, understand that this is just an average. You could do better, you could do worse. And perhaps there's some uh, seeds that are just notoriously low or notoriously high. So this is how it works. Uh, we're gonna hop over here to the calculation tab. And so the first thing that you'll probably notice is that some areas are shaded in yellow. And those are what I'm gonna call input areas. This is where you either need to select something or enter some kind of value. And I'll tell you what you need to put in each one of these areas uh, when we go through an example here in just a moment. Um, there also are two sections to this tab. Uh, the top section here is called Harvest Calculations, and the second section is called Process Calculations. You could use either or both of these sections, and you can also use them in conjunction with one another or independently. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at this first section. All right, the first section is called Harvest Calculations. This is the top section of this, this sheet here. Um, this is going to tell you the silver to labor ratio or what you can expect uh, to get based on the type of seed that you'll be planting. Um, this section actually has three or four inputs that you actually need to fill out. The first one being is the select. And here what you're going to do is simply select the seed type uh, that you, you would like to get some information on. So in this case, let's uh, let's take a look at rice. All right. All right. So you'll notice that the selection list is, of course, in alphabetical order, and that should make it pretty easy for you to find whatever you want to plant. Uh, the next thing that you need to tell the tool is how many seed beds you'll be planting. Uh, I mean, you could use one to figure out the average, but in my case, I have 10. So let's go ahead and use that number. Uh, the next thing you need to do is tell the tool uh, the current auction house value of rice or whatever that you plan on selling. Um, to do this, you simply open your auction house and check the value. Pretty straightforward, right? Um, I find it best to actually use the seven-day average versus the current lowest auction house price. And so if you would like to know how to find that, all you have to do is type rice into your auction house. And then at the bottom right, you click on the bar graph icon. And then you'll get this pop-up window. And all you have to do is simply hover over the furthest bar on the right. That will give you uh, information about today. So uh, once you do that, you'll see this thing that says seven-day averages. And that's what you would like to use, or that's what I prefer to use. Uh, but you can see here on my auction house, at least at the time I did the video, uh, the current auction house price for rice was two silver and 65 copper but the seven day average is three silver and seven copper and so likely if i'm a little bit careful when i choose to sell my stuff i could get closer to that seven day average okay so this point i need to remind everybody about decimals and it's a little tricky when you talk gold silver and copper uh, because that's really something that would kind of indicate having two decimal places, but we don't ever use two decimal places. Uh, so when entering the value of something like uh, three silver and seven copper, it is important to get it correct so that this tool does not mislead you. Uh, so 10 silver is entered as 0 0.1, whereas one silver would be entered as 0 0.1. Zero, 01. Uh, and then to further go down the list here, 20 copper would be 0 0.002. And finally, 2 copper would be 0 0.0002. And I know that uh, verbally is probably not very appealing, but uh, I'm going to throw up a little, a little chart here uh, that you can take a look at while I talk. All right, so what I need to do here is put my value uh, or my data of three silver and seven copper into the auction house value per field. Um, that is 0 0.0307, uh, three silver, seven copper. Okay, so the next thing that you need to do is tell it the amount of crops that you got if you're using this tool after you've harvested 
or if you're using this tool before you start growing anything, you can simply use the average multiplied by how many seed beds uh, that you will be planting. So in my case, I have 10 that I want to take a look at. So all I, all I really have to do is take 10 times the average value of 139, which is 13, uh, 1390. And that is that was a pretty simple math formula. Um, but if you'd like, you can let the spreadsheet do the calculation for you. So let's say you have something like, I don't know, seven seed beds. You can simply click in the cell uh, in column B, number four, row four, so cell B4, and type in equals seven times 139. So if you're new to using spreadsheets, remember that you always need to start by typing the equal signs when you're putting in a formula. That tells the spreadsheet, hey, look, I've given you a formula or a math expression, and you need to calculate it. Also, for any uh, newbie that is uh, newbie spreadsheet users, when you say multiplied by, you do not use X, 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 the X key. You do not use that. You use the star key. The star key is shift eight. Uh, it's number eight on uh, pretty much all English keyboards. So when you say equals seven times 139, it's not seven X 139, it's seven star. 139. And again, make sure that you always start that by hitting equal sign. All right, so there is one more field that is yellow, and that is the cargo cert current value. Um, this is actually the way I decided to find the value of vocation. I could have used many things, but uh, I suspect that the cargo cert will be a solid baseline for the value of vocation and, and just until something changes. This is because it is the one of the lowest vocation costs and one of the highest used items, making it very good for a baseline. Uh, you only need to change this value uh, if you're using a seed that cost vocation. But in my case, I'm using rice, which I bought from a general merchant. So the vocation calculations really has no effect uh, on anything here. Um, however, if I were to change this over to let's say rosemary uh, then you'll see that the vocation cost comes into play and we'll look at one of those examples when I finish with the rice. All right so I have 10 seed beds in the auction house value of three silver seven copper per and I expect to get about 1390 uh, rice plants in my yield. So the spreadsheet will update the harvest calculations showing me what I can expect in my silver to labor ratio wise. Uh, there are seven total calculations. The first is the silver to labor base uh, calculation indicated here in cell D8. So that is telling me if I had a nober, no, nober, if I had no labor discount from farming, I could make uh, four silver and 78 copper per labor point. However, if I go over where, all the way to max, which is the, um, uh, I didn't write it down here, but if I go over to max, then I would be making seven silver and 98 copper uh, per labor point. However, uh, September is a rank seven farmer, which means he gets a 20% labor reduction and it's at this point I throw up the uh, sheet that shows you the rank labor reductions now. I'll put that up there. So therefore, for September, um, I would be making uh, what is in cell G8, which is 5 silver and 98 copper if I were to plant these rice. All right, so let's quickly look at an example when vocation is a factor. So let's just go back to the rosemary. Uh, the first thing I need to do is go up back up to the top and change my selection to rosemary. Next, I need, need to enter the amount of seed beds I'll be planting. Yep, still 10. Next, I grab the seven-day auction uh, value of rosemary from the auction house. That uh, checks the seven-day. And then also I need to check the seven-day average for cargo certs. And I plug those values in. And... Uh, yuck. 
it's not looking good. The value of the seeds cost more than the potential return. And how that is calculated is we take that number at the top from the cargo cert, you multiply that by the cost of the seed, uh, which is 45 for rosemary, and ultimately the value of the seeds exceeds the value of the potential return, which means I would be losing money if I were to plant rosemary. I'd actually be better spending off if I really wanted to spend my vocation on something, selling the cargo set, uh, selling the cargo cert certificates than actually using any labor on this crop. But wait, you may ask, why do I figure out the value of vocation when I got the vocation for free? Did you really? The answer is simple. If you use your vocation instead of selling it, you are in fact costing, costing yourself the value of that vocation. Doesn't matter how you get something, if you use it, you have used it. So the easy ex easiest example I can think of is like, let's say you were to find that your bank account had some extra money in it. And uh, you decide to go ahead and contact your, your bank and they say, hey, look, we're, we apologize for the confusion. And because you're such an honest customer, you can keep the money. Okay, so subsequently, if you go out and buy something with that money using your debit card, you don't say this item is free uh, because the bank is still going to deduct the value that you spent from the funds from your account. Now, you can argue semantics and say, well, since I didn't earn the money, therefore it was free. That does not change the fact that you had the money and then you used it. I hope that makes sense. And that's one thing that I like to drive home because people often overlook that. And so that is pretty much the top part of the spreadsheet, the harvesting calculations in a nutshell, but I still have to cover the processing calculations. So let's move on. Okay, so the next section is the uh, processing section. And there's basically two ways to use this section. Uh, the first would be by taking the information from the harvest section above and then rolling that information into uh, figuring out how much it, how much silver to labor ratio you would be making if you were to process the stuff that you grew. Uh, you could also choose to not use that information and you can enter your own values. And to do that, um, uh, we'll talk more about that here in a minute, but I have... I also want to point out that I've also included um, processing logs, lumber, pelts, stone, and iron ore into this section. So if you wish to calculate one of those items, um, all you have to do is go up to the top and you'll find that the log, lumber, pelt, stone, iron is uh, the last selection on the list, as you can see here. But before we get into that, let's, uh, let's take a look at processing the rice that I was uh, planting above. And uh, let's take a look at my harvest and I'll roll those numbers together. So here we go. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change all the harvest values back to what it was here at the top. So I'm gonna set it to, to uh, use rice. I'm gonna enter 10 seed beds. Once again, I'm gonna put the auction house value of three silver, seven copper. And I, again, I'm going to expect a yield of 1,390 rice. All right, so now that all that is set up again, uh, I need to fill out some of these yellow fields in the processing section. Uh, the first thing I need to do is in the select area, uh, this labeled roll labor cost into cal calculation. Uh, that means I'm going to take the labor from uh, the harvesting and uh, combine it with the, the labor in this section that it takes to process it so I can get a really true uh, silver to labor ratio. And I'm gonna set that to yes. Um, that, that basically just tells the tool, use the values from above. Uh, so the next two yellow boxes starting with, if no, um, I can actually ignore those for now. Um, next, all I have to do is enter the value of ground grain into this uh, cell label processed material value. And, Voila. So this is telling me if I were to grow 
and process all of my rice into ground grain, I would be, uh, again, I'm uh, rank seven, so I get a 20% discount on my labor. I would be making three silver and 87 copper per labor point. Wait, you say, this is horseshit. This is actually less than I, what I would have got had I just sold my rice. And it, that is true. If you look back at the spreadsheet, you'll see that in the harvesting section here, uh, the value of my rice was 42 gold and 67 silver. And had I sold them right away, I would have made five silver and 98 copper per labor point. But if time is a factor, and for many of those people with many accounts, it often is. By processing this rice, I would have used more labor and still made some profit. So this is going to be up to you decide uh, to decide if you want to burn that extra labor by processing materials or hold on to your labor and just go for the higher to silver labor ratio. It really depends on the person. Um, some of you will and some of you won't. As I said earlier, this spreadsheet is not just about silver to labor. It's also about time. Both of them are very important. If you have many accounts, time is likely more important than the labor. But if you're one of those people that only have one account or maybe two accounts, labor is probably going to be the deciding factor. Okay, I said you could use either one of these calculations or either one of these sections independently of each other. So let me show you how that work, works. Uh, so let's say I don't want to grow my own rice. I just want to buy it off the auction house. And I found a stack, let's just say for two silver, uh, two silver per rice unit. So the first thing I needed to go to do, even though I'm just using the, um, the processing uh, calculations, I still need to set the top value to rice. Uh, so I need to go to the top. I'll change this to rice. And that just basically tells the tool this is what we're making. And then I set the section here where it says roll labor cost into calculation. I change that to no. Okay, so now these other two fields come into play. I the, then need to enter the cost per unit. Um, again, I said I'm buying these rice for two silver. So I need to put two silver into the cell label, labeled if no, enter unit cost. And then the next cell I uh, labeled, if no, enter the total quantity to process. Um, so I'm, I said I bought a stack, which is 1,000. So I'll go ahead and enter that value. Um, and then the last thing that I need to fill out is the uh, value of the ground grain, which uh, we already have filled out here. But if you don't, you can look it up and plug it in. Um, also, I need to point out, if, if you don't know what something processes into, um, once you select the C type at the top, you'll notice here in row 12 that it will tell you, uh, for example, uh, where it says here, uh, the ratio of seed process to material, one rice equals one ground grain. If I were to change that to rosemary, it would say, uh, one rosemary equals two spices. Um, and then if I were to change it to, let's say, something like saffron, which is the tier three seed, you would see that one saffron equals 4.5 spices and so on, so on. But I'm going to go ahead and change that back to rice. And bing, bang, boom, I'm done. If I were to buy rice at two silver per uh, unit, and process it with my current proficiency, I would be making five silver per labor point, which is actually pretty close to what um, I would get for growing it. Um, still not quite as good as growing it, but burning labor, processing stuff on alt is something that you can do AFK, or you can actually do it pretty quickly if you have an upgraded thatched house. Again, I'm going to harp back to the thing. It's time versus labor. Which one is more important? Now finally, let's look at processing things uh, like logs and lumbers or pelts uh, into things like hide. Uh, so to do this, I 
I got to go back to the top here, and then I'm going to select the last item on the list, which is labeled log, pelt, stone, iron, and I'm going to put that in the selection list. Um, again, I need to set the roll labor cost into calculation to no. Uh, next, I need to enter the value of the raw material, whether it's logs, pelt, stone, or iron ore, doesn't matter. Uh, but in this case, let's just use an example of iron ore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my server and I'm going to take a look at the auction house. And let's say I find you know, a stack of iron for 22 gold and 22 silver, which comes out to 2 silver and 22 copper each. Uh, so I'll go ahead and plug that value in. Then I need to add the final product value, meaning what is the value in my case, because I'm using iron ore, I need to add the value of iron ingots. Uh, so if I look at my server, I'm seeing 11 silver, 24 copper uh, as the seven day average. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that. And then the spreadsheet updating me tells me that I could make one silver and two copper per labor point if I were to buy this stuff off the auction house and process it. Now, had I actually been maxed in leather working, which uh, I'm like, like maybe a thousand on September, um, I could have made up to one silver and 70 copper. It's a pretty shitty uh, proposition, but again, this is something that people can do to make uh, use of their labor and do it rather quickly. So that is pretty much how this spreadsheet works. You could use both sections or you could use either one individually. I know this video is going to actually run a tad long and well, you know, that's just me. I, I just try to make sure that everybody understands everything that I say. And I honestly feel like a tool like this would be actually a great benefit to the community especially if it were linked directly to the auction house. And uh, as a web developer in the past, I have asked uh, Tryon for access to data uh, from, the web, or from the auction house to build a website. And that was about uh, two years ago. And at that time I was told no, cause Excel. So now I actually decided, Hey, well, if, uh, you know, try and say an Excel won't allow it, then why not ask Excel? And so I have worked out a friend, uh, I have worked with a friend on Twitch or a fellow uh, Twitch streamer that uh, talks to Excel and ask them, hey man, ask them this question. And so maybe because Korea already has a website that shows the auction house values of their region, perhaps they will see fit to create an API uh, for fans, fan sites uh, to make use of tools such as this. I mean, how awesome would it be if you could simply go to the website, type in uh, or select a C type, and then it would automatically get all the values from the auction house and completely populate this thing in just one click. I mean, how nice that would be. Man, that would be awesome. But, you know, currently that's not, uh, it's not a possibility, but uh, maybe someday. I hope you have found this video both helpful and informative. You guys can show your support by liking and subscribing here on YouTube. And I'm also going to ask something I don't think I've ever asked before, but I would really appreciate if you guys and gals would go out there and um, share this video and this tool with your Arcage friends. Additionally, you can support me on Twitch, Twitter, and Patreon. All those links will be uh, as well as a link to this uh, spreadsheet on Google Docs will be available in the video description. Until next time, September same, be well.